Uh-oh, she's looking ghostly pale. I can only mean one thing, and that is that we are doing another face swashing video. I have left pretty much everything off of my face with the exception of just some basic complexion products so that the opacity of the colors shows up as true as possible. But today we're gonna be focusing on coral and peach blushes. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Khaki. I have an enormous collection, an encyclopedia, if you will, of products, a lot of new releases and such. I do that not so that you can try and keep up, but actually quite the contrary, so that I can help you discern which products, which formulas, which nuanced color stories are going to work best for you and for your life and for your collection. And let me just say, it must be something that I am personally interested in, not just from an art math, art supply standpoint, that I just happen to really like coral and peach blushes. Plus I was watching my friend Kelly Gooch recently and she said that it's trendy right now apparently. Not that I know anything about trends, but I rely on my cool friends to know these things, and she told me, she told everyone, anyone watching, that coral is having a moment. So the way that this works is I'm probably just going to go with creams first and then powders. We're going to swatch them all over my face. We'll be discussing the formulas. We're going to be talking about color theory. I'll go over the formulas. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I think that we'll just kind of begin where we're beginning, right? I'm going to start here with the Jones Road Miracle Balm in Miami Beach. This is a formula where you have to break the seal, and this is of the like three of these that I've tried besides the clear. It is the most pigmented, so hopefully we'll be able to get a pretty good swatch of it here, but it's quite translucent, and it does have shimmer to it. The shift on it is kind of, ah, it's not NARS orgasm, okay, It's but it's still a little bit golden. You can see that. This is not something that I wear very often because it doesn't have a dry down, and so you really have to wear it on like a perfect skin day, and let's just say I haven't been having many of those lately. This is not my favorite thing, but it is my favorite one of the Miracle Balm. So if you're already a Jones Road girly person and you understand the expectations that go into trying to enjoy Jones Road as a brand, which is just that things are very like skincare first. All that to say, this isn't my favorite formula in the world, but it is my favorite version of this. Next we have my brand newbie here. This is the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil in Just Peachy. Absolutely gorgeous. I still don't understand what the plumping plumping part of it is because the bronzer isn't plumping or doesn't claim to be plumping and so I don't know. It doesn't tingle, it doesn't do anything strange. It is practically fluorescent by comparison to Miami Beach. It is a comparable formula in the sense that it also doesn't really have its own dry down but it's so much more high tech of a formula. It's very thin so it does leave a gel texture on the skin but it cooperates with so many other textures of makeup because you don't have to work hard to get the product to lay down. With the Jones Road, you're really, since you have to break the seal and everything, I feel like it is so tacky. Moving it around, it's gonna move other things around, and that's why I say you kind of have to wear it on a perfect skin day, because you want to have very few things on your skin other than that. This is super, super cooperative, like totally other end of the spectrum in terms of something that like appears to be this texture. Next we have, speaking of things that my face eats, the NARS Afterglow Liquid Blush in Brazen. I did just do a full deep dive on the entire NARS Afterglow glow liquid blush line, all six shades. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Makeup by Mario blushes when I get them in the mail. I have two of them, but they're sending me the full line and I'll do another deep dive on those and comparison swatches and everything like that. But if you're curious about the NARS Afterglow liquid blushes, there is a really great video on that. So I can link that somewhere. So this is brazen. This is probably like the color that resonates the most with me in the whole line, just because it's so easy for me to use and it's just such a pretty color on my skin. But you do have to take kind of great pains to make sure that the color sticks around with these, the swatches do tend to come out more vivid than you would expect. Like when I was comparing them to other things in my collection, with the exception of the corals. I think that most things in the coral family do look pretty saturated when you swatch them, but the more nuanced colors, the like the soft pinks and like Dolce Vita and stuff, they looked really, really vivid by comparison. And I think that they've tried to pack a lot of pigment into this formula because of the nature of it, because of like the gel texture and the way that it shears out so much. And so don't believe everything you see in terms of the swatches when we get into the powders definitely don't believe everything you see this is more of a color theory exercise to show you what the nuance differences are in the purest form of these colors understand that every one of these you know you'd probably cut by half or more in terms of like what they're gonna look like spread out on your cheeks brazen is looking a lot more red right it's giving like an orange red much more so than these it's just got a lot less white pigment in it and 
I think that that actually translates really beautifully onto a lot of skin tones. It works well on me. It would just be kind of a challenge probably to build it up enough to get as much saturation as I like on deeper skin tones, but that's not to say it can't be done. And I would recommend using it on top of like a light dusting of powder for it to last a little bit longer. This is a very, very sheer formula. This is one of those ones where I applied it the first time and I was like, is it even doing anything? And then I kept applying it and I was like, this is actually exquisite. So this is the Surratt Artistique Liquid Blush in Cantaloupe. And I'll just keep going in this direction here. Oh my gosh, Surratt does not back away from an interesting version of a color. I'm really having to build that up because you do, you open up Surratt's colors and you're like, I get that it's in a color family that's familiar to me, but they always have like a slightly different take on it. And that's just so much yellower. It's so much more like committed orange and it works so beautifully as like a sheer wash. I would actually compare this formula very closely to the NARS. I think that they behave really, really similarly now that I'm thinking about it. I do think that this one's a little bit thinner and so it builds a little bit better and it does actually like last a little bit longer. I'm not really sure why that would be maybe just the um, less, less emollient quality of it makes it so that it doesn't like, you know, fade into your skincare or your foundation quite as quickly. I do, I really enjoy it. It's a very, very beautiful product. And as you can see, it really stands in contrast against those other shades. I mean, these are all decidedly peach coral, but look how different they are. That first one, Miami Beach, I mean, Miami Beach in the tub looks like it's going to be bright coral and here it's looking practically mauve. Look at that. So I do have to do my little spiel on my own undertones and I will, as usual, link my interactive color wheel down below where you can say, everything turns blank on me. And for me, everything turns pink. <laughs> everything turns pink on me. And it's because I have these kind of like neutral, neutral undertones for skin is actually kind of yellow orange. And so the yellow golden quality of my skin tends to cancel out purple, which means I can kind of push harder in the purple direction with products that I use like blushes and eyeshadows and things like that. And it's going to kind of muddy, like, you know, look more at home. Whereas if I try and go for something that's pink, it's not just gonna show up pink on me, it's going to show up pank with an A. It has been quite enlightening for some people. It is a very rudimentary little thing that I made on like, you know, Google Drive, but the interactivity of it seems to be really helping people understand their undertones and hopefully it can help you too. Next, I have Salt New York Persimmon. So this is part of the re-release, the new update of all the shades. Oh, is that not so beautiful in the pan? So here we have, ooh. That is decidedly red, but like a true coral, I think, that does have a little bit of like a, a brown anchor note in there. Kiki of Salt New York, she just has a very, very strong color theory mind. She knows exactly what she wants. She is Virgo through and through. And there's something really fantastic about seeing her vision come to life because, I mean, yeah, it's very similar as you can see to Brazen, but it's got even more of kind of like a, like a terracotta quality to it. Yeah, that's persimmon. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And it does the trick, especially because it has, I think honestly, a touch of blue in it. I know I told you we were just gonna be talking about like three colors here, but I think it's got a touch touch of blue in it that's kind of muddying it a little bit in a good way. And so it's going to really help with people who your skin tries to turn everything super orange that blue is gonna kind of counteract that a little bit. Okay, back to the Natasha Denona puff paint. I swatched a handful of these. What in the heck is happening there? Ew, I think I've had this too long. <gasps> I think I have to let this one go, y'all, I'm sorry. I'll do it on my hand here, just so that you can see. I'm just, I don't wanna put it on my face. It's kind of similar to the Makeup by Mario. It's even a little bit pinker, and honestly, it doesn't really fall into this category right now because it's a little bit more similar to Orgasm from NARS, except without the sparkles in it, so yeah. This is this needs to be retired. I will buy another one, though, because it's one of my favorites. It's just clearly expired. Okay, next we have Isabella, one of my favorite shades in the Thrive Triple Threat color stick. And this actually does have some shimmer to it. It's actually interesting how much shimmer I, I seem to find in like the peachy coral shades more than other color families, right? It's almost like you know you want to look healthy and therefore we're also going to put a radiance in there. This is a unique formula though because it does have a lot of silicone in it. It goes on like a cream as the delivery system, but you can see it's matte in effect. And that's just speaking, I think, to the priority of Thrive Cosmetics as being a long-wearing makeup company. You can always use 
a finishing spray or like a dewy foundation or something like that to get the effect, but these are waterproof, life-proof products, and that's why, I mean, it's a really effective version of what it is. I love the formula. It goes on beautifully with like a brush or a sponge or whatever, but it is, you can see, it's very different. Very, very different and very effective. It's the silicone -y quality of it that makes it kind of go on on top of things in a really nice way without disturbing them, and you do end up with something that actually looks more like a powder when it's finally down. All right, this will be a line in the sand. So this, and I mean that because this is an extreme version of this color. So this is the shade Bellini in the Yummy Skin from Danessa Myricks. This is her Yummy Skin blush. And this is very much meant for either people who love orange or people with deep skin who are trying to get something that, you know, probably looks kind of like this on me. You know, it's just going to actually show up in a more effective way with less product on your face. And I can't get little enough of this product on my face to not completely take over. So bear that in mind. It's just not for me from a formulation standpoint because it is made to be saturated and true to color without any like dustiness or gray to it because it's meant to work really beautifully on deep skin tones and from what I have seen it does. And the Upsolite formula is also, it's very silicone-y but it's a different kind of silicone-y to the Thrive. It's much kind of looser and softer when you're touching it. It really warms to your fingers and I think that it's really beautiful. If I want to use this I can like mix it with her other product, the actual complexion version of this, and get something very wearable. While we're on Danessa Myricks, this is, what do they call this thing? Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette, Coquette, Sweet Cheeks, XOXO, and Tease. We will go ahead and do Sweet Cheeks and Coquette here. These are so soupy by comparison, like just a totally different technology, right? So that is her beautiful, beautiful Pinky Peach. And that is her beautiful, beautiful, very committed kind of like coral pink, but they're much pinker, much, much pinker. I'll say the same thing that I said when I did my beige blush face swatch video, and that is in some cases we're going to discover that these are not in the category. And I almost feel like even though by comparison to this one that has quite a lot of blue in it right here, you know, and this one that's quite desaturated, you see this and you think, oh, those are definitely going to be like very, very committed corals. And actually on the skin, they're quite pink. It's just an optical illusion because of what they're next to. Isn't that interesting? I think that's interesting. <laughs> okay, here's one that I don't think I've ever used on camera before. And they sent me the whole vault of these, but this is the Milk Makeup Teeny Tiny Little Baby in Perk. Maybe I have used this. Perk sounds familiar. Either way, beautiful shade. Let's go. Perk. So pretty so pretty. It is picking my foundation up. I wiped it off and it picked it up again. It's just a little stiff for my taste. Very pretty color, but like I don't end up reaching for these because they're just not that cooperative. Just not my favorite. So here we have the Dew Blush in Poppy from Say Beauty. And this is a beautiful color. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful formula, great delivery system, fluorescent. Popping in to say that when I washed these off, that is the only one that stained. And it stained fluorescent pink on that spot on my forehead and would not come off for anything. It's probably still underneath my makeup right now. Okay. I don't know what's in there, but it's like highlighter pink and it does not wash off. And you see, God, you just see how everything tries to turn pink on me. It is a really beautiful true coral. Okay, we have two Tower 28 blushes here. They were just the ones that looked the most like this family. I can't keep the names straight in my head because they're all so similar. They're all something hour. So we have Golden Hour and we have Rush Hour. So we'll start with Golden Hour. This one does look like it's going to be more orange. Orange, yeah, that's awesome. That's a really, really good example of the pink that some of these things can lean towards and then like a true orange, orange coral. Like that's really gorgeous. I wouldn't even call it peach, you know? It's just a nice kind of like nuanced orange on the skin. That's beautiful. And orange is a shade kind of like purple that like looks really good on like green skin tones, you know? Gonna enhance it. It's just something that you can kind of push the boundaries of. And then we have Rush Hour, which in the pan looks a lot more actually peach. As far as this formula is concerned, it's pretty low tech. It doesn't dry down. That color is gorgeous. Wow. That's why I don't reach for them that often is just because there's like not much to say about the formula. It's a cream. They're pretty. They're not super expensive. I like them, you know, but like I pass that it's like, you know, <laughs> you either love them or they're just kind of underwhelming to you. And like, they just are kind of there for me. Yeah. What a great color. That is again, rush hour. Whew. 
Beautiful. Here's an oldie but a goodie. I pulled out, look at that. <gasps> oh my God. We're talking about like one of the most desaturated peaches in my collection. This is Cali Dream in the cream blush light from Melt Cosmetics. I bought this entire line when it came out. These are so awesome. This formula is so awesome. Oh. <sighs> Oh, it's so pretty because it is truly like orange peach. It's got so much yellow in it, but it's so desaturated. It's got a ton of white in it. They feel almost like a creamy dry oil on the skin. They're, it's just a fantastic formula. All right, next we have Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand from Charlotte Tilbury in Peach Pop. This is also a quite fluorescent version of a peach, but whew, Look at that. Look at how pink it is by comparison to everything else. It's right up next to those ones that skew so orange, right? If we take that one out of there, those orange shades really just highlight how pink actually Peach Pop is. About this formula, I definitely think that the saturation of the colors differs shade to shade, which is fine. Like, I think that that's a good thing. And so if you have something like the original, like the Pillow Talk shade, this is gonna be a lot more pigmented. It just kind of goes forever. Whereas I feel like the original Pillow Talk is just kind of like an easy breezy, like barely there effortless kind of thing to put on like you need to have your wits about you when you put this on your cheeks because it's, a, it's just a lot in a good way one time somebody left a comment that said can we start a gofundme to get khakis loose salt new york pans taken care of and i was just like yes please and it still hasn't happened so i had that salt new york pan in there and it's now kind of all over everything including my fingernails so anyway here is the so soft blush from m cosmetics in lychee Ooh. Still pretty pink. I mean, she definitely doesn't shy away from more extreme colors. And so lychee, not being so peachy, is very intentional for her. I don't think that, you know, Michelle Fawn is going, oops, I meant for that to be another color and it's actually so pink, like, no. And so I do have also her Magic Hour powder blush that we're gonna get to, and that one's like decidedly orange, right? I think I gave away Faded Clementine because it was so hard for me to wear, you know? It was just like bright freaking orange, so sorry. So next, I think that this one's also going to kind of prove to be maybe less in the category than I'm hoping, but this is the Glow Play blush blush from MAC in Cheer Up. So this is a putty formula and yeah, she's looking pink. That's pink. So that one just isn't really in the category, but it's very pretty. And then we have Quickie in the Cheek Freak from About Face Beauty. They did also send me this entire line. They did get a little squished in transit. This one's looking a little worse for the wear. <laughs> See if I can get a good swatch here. These are also incredibly decisive. I feel like they do an amazing job of making every color count when they put out a release. Oh, yeah, that's so beautiful. This is a much more silicone -y formula. It's quite matte on the skin. I shouldn't say it's matte, it's, it's silicone. -y. <laughs> So it does have a tiny bit of like a reflection to it. So it's not, you know, absorbing light, but it doesn't have a dewy finish. It has a matte finish, but not as much of a matte appearance. It's beautiful. These are so beautiful and they're like $18. I have another Thrive one. This is Candy. And like, that looks red as hell, but like, I mean, that might be the closest thing to like true coral that we have. I definitely think it's in the family. I definitely think it's in the family. So that is candy. All the same things that I said about the formula are the same for that. And we will bridge the cream to powder gap, as it were, with the Patrick Ta cream and powder duo in Do We Know Her? So this is a beautiful kind of set that he does. And his recommended use case for this is actually to use the powder and then the cream. He kind of innovated this process of saying like, yep, we're gonna put the color down and then we're also going to bring the skin back to a natural skin texture or maybe even better than a natural skin texture. Whereas most of us previous to this, at least myself, we thought that, you know, you should always use cream first and then powder. Not so. So I do like that these colors are different from each other. The powder is different from the cream. Powder is like decidedly desaturated peach looking more like this. And then the cream is, you know, a quite pinky vivid coral. Ooh! The other thing to note here is that if you have his velvet blushes, the original release, they're very, very sheer. Like the quality of them is just very, very sheer. 
and these are quite pigmented. And I think that that's great information. These are just lovely. They're just lovely. I love them so much. And this is just such a good color combo. That rich peachy color. I need to pull this one back out <laughs> and have it like front and center because my passion has been reignited for these colors and that's a really good version of them. We do actually have one more cream formula. Oopsies. It's because this packaging for Sigma, the powder blushes and the cream blushes both come in the same compact. So I just like blanked on that. So these were gifted to me during Creators and Friends trip that we all went on to Charleston. So much fun. I love all of these. I really do. But I have to say this one being called Pashmina, this one looks a little bit more coral. And then this one being called Coral Dawn, it's a little rosier, isn't it? But anyway, we'll go ahead and swatch both. These remind me a lot of the aforementioned Melt Blush Lights, the cream blush lights. Just such a beautiful, beautiful formula. So there we have, that's Pashmina. Okay. That's pink. That's very, very pink. And then we have Coral Dawn. And that's a lot more coral. Okay. It looks a little different in the pan. So that's very, very helpful information. Yeah, Pashmina is actually pink. Okay, now we are into the powders. I have bisected my face almost. I'm going to next go in with our Surratt blushes. They sent these to me. I'm not saying that these are the only options that Surratt has for these families of colors. Like, I don't know. But these are the ones that I have. And one of these is Pot de Peche, and the other one is something else, and I will put it on the screen because I don't, I don't know, and I would have to pull them out, and I don't even know if I can do that. They gave me a little tool. I don't know where that went. Come on, that's a hilarious joke. So here is the kind of pale, beautiful, pinky peach. Oh, so sheer. So sheer, so sheer. Oh my gosh, here I was talking a big game like, oh, the powders are gonna be so saturated. Don't believe your eyes. Like these are exquisite formulas. Their powder formulas from Surratt are just intoxicating if you're into like a luxury powder formula. They're just, I don't know. Someone tried to explain the science of them to me in the comments and I didn't retain any of it, but I was very impressed. They're special, that's what I'll say. That was my bimbo answer. And then, oh my goodness, Pau de Peche is just so, orange and lovely, isn't it? They're really, really easy to work with and so gorgeous. Next, we have Creamy Peach from Makeup by Mario, clearly quite loved by me in my powder blush category. Oh, put that there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that is so nice. And this formula is awesome. I really am like one of those kind of like Makeup by Mario stands, with the exception of his foundation, just because like, I think foundations are really polarizing. Yeah, either love them or you don't, whereas there are so many other variables in loving like a blush or something, because maybe you like the color more or whatever. But the peach journey that I have been on with Makeup by Mario, I mentioned in my last video, starting with his collab with KKW back in the day when she was making makeup. And I was so excited that they put out a peach and it was just the most frustratingly bad for Formula. And this is almost identical to that shade, but in just such a better version of a formula. It's so pretty. And you can see it's called Creamy Peach, but like when I do a big fat swatch of it, it does look like more of a saturated coral. And I mean, we're really talking about like a lot of stuff here that looks ridiculously similar as it goes on. Like that's Thrive Candy. And then that's Creamy Peach from Makeup by Mario. And they look really, really similar. It's interesting when you see it like just kind of stripped down to the undertones, right? Because I would never have thought of candy as being that similar. Okay, as promised, this is the Heaven's Glow Blush from M Cosmetics in Magic Hour. And this was one of her first collections, right? That, you know, it's just a color concept, Magic Hour. And it is supposed to be just this really wearable kind of muted peach but not the same as Faded Clementine. Faded Clementine is much oranger. This is so beautiful. And the thing to kind of keep in mind with these is just that they are radiant. For a powder, it's not always my favorite thing. I would rather lay down more pigment than shimmer. I would like it to be more negotiable than that, but it's like the more you put down, the more shimmer you get kind of thing. And so bear that in mind with these, but she really does understand color. This is, and I have learned from y'all in the comments that like Dior is actually reformulating the new release of these, but this is the original Dior Backstage Coral 004. Rosy Glow Blush, and we will just do one of those. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Much more kind of orange right when it goes on, and then you'll see it has a touch of a pH adapter, and it's going to go just like a little bit rosier as it sort of adapts to my skin, but not by much, maybe only in like the sheer areas. It's just a very intelligent formula. A 
apparently it's being reformulated. I don't know what that means for the performance. We will find out. I will probably buy, I think it's called Rosewood. I'll probably buy that one. We'll just see because I think that that's valuable information because I've really, really liked these in the past, but what a beautiful color. And while I feel like a lot of companies have spent a lot of time duping the 001 pink version. Not a lot of companies are making a big deal out of duping that one. I would say it's probably the most similar to that powder color in the Patrick Ta duo. Okay, here we have, and again, I'm not sure if these are going to like be in the category, but we shall see. So this is the Duo Dimension Zone blushes from LH Cosmetics in Time and Limit. Here we have one and Limit. So we are talking about coral and much more pink. I like the push pull of that, like I said, to be able to kind of play with that. But I would probably have gone in the other direction and made the more desaturated one, the pink, and then the pop to be like the warmth of coral. Very, very pretty. I think that, you know, it's only if like the entire thing kind of appeals to you. If you're looking at that pink and you're like, yes, you know, that's what I like to wear with a coral or something. It's a great formula. Not my favorite packaging in the world. It's very pretty. I like it. I still reach for it very much because like, while I like this color, there's not really anywhere to go from there for me because this color doesn't really work for me. It would not be a coral blush video if we didn't talk about Luminoso from Milani, kind of the original, right? And it is quite luminous. Yes, it is. And it's so beautiful. It's quite pigmented. And so it's not so much like Magic Hour or the, you know, any of the other Heaven's Glow blushes from M Cosmetics in the sense that the more you put on, the more shimmer you get. I feel like you don't have to put on that much of Luminoso to get the Luminoso of it. And you're not just ending up with like this highlighter on your face. It's a beautiful formula. It really, really is. I love this so much. It's like why among all of these, it's the only drugstore product I'm talking about today. Now I did unfortunately give away my most vivid, bright freaking coral of the Make Beauty blushes to my friend Leslie when she was here because that's, it's just her jam. But this is far more my jam. So this is Amber Glow in the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush from Make Beauty. So awesome, beautiful formula. You can, I'm pretty sure if you can, you can just buy the pans, I think. You know, you can just do that if you want to, but they are removable, they are replaceable. You only have to buy the compact once and that color is just off the charts gorgeous. Then we have something that has just quickly made its way into like pretty much every makeup look. It's kind of one of those things where it lives in my flash drive memory on my brain. I'm just like, yeah, that's the one I'm gonna reach for. This is my favorite coral powder blush at the moment. And this is the Giorgio Armani one in the shade 30. It's just so good. It's just right. It just has a little bit more muddiness to it. And also it's just very not pink which is fantastic. So I put this in my eye looks. It's just kind of one of those things that I start painting with. Something about it just really clicks with me. And I think it's just because it does such a good job of not going pink on me. And also it's so sheer. You build it so slowly. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really my favorite right now. This is another one that, I mean, probably second place, right? This is the House Labs, what is the name of the actual product? Color Fuse Blush. And this is the shade Pomelo Peach. And it is quite a bit, I wanna say, pinker. So, you know, you look at something like that, it's like quite orange and this is much pinker, but it's still super pretty. It's really easy for me to wear, but they do serve different purposes. And this is a gel to powder formula. So when you touch it, it does feel like it has a little bit of like a grip to it, which is really nice. And it's really lovely on the skin. It's very blurring, you know? And it, I just love the big luxurious size of the pan and everything. Like it might be less product or the same amount of product as other things, but there's something really nice about how huge the pan is. And I use it alongside its friend here, which also looks quite saturated, but it's not. The blushes from House Labs actually like look way scarier in the pan than they actually are. They're really, really lovely. They're quite easy to work with and a lot of fun. Then we have Too Faced. This is the Cloud Crush in Tequila Sunset, and it is also a little pinker than I wanted it to be. Oh, it's fragranced. Ew. I don't know why I expected it not to be fragranced. It's Too Faced, but it smells like coconut. Blech. Actually, I mean, it's a pretty true coral up against everything else. I just found that like with the, for like I feel like it lays down a lot of product all at once. And maybe that's why I feel like it's not my favorite is just because the way, and you can see it up against the Giorgio Armani, like it's still way pinker than the Giorgio Armani, but it, when you put it on, it just behaves completely differently from like the House Labs. And I'm always gonna reach for the House Labs over the Too Faced even though the component is beautiful. 
I love this little component. It looks like it should have candy inside or a Polly Pocket. And then the last one here, this is actually a like debut to my channel. I haven't even used this yet on camera. I don't know if I've used it at all. This is the new Double Take Skin Perfecting Blush Duo from Uma in Fair Lady. And it's a duo here. One of them being quite brown and then one of them being quite shimmery peach. So the combo looks like that, like next to each other. And then if you mix them together, I think, yeah, you get something that's more of like a brown coral because it shifts. I just wanted to include that because I like that they went warm with it and it's really unique and really beautiful, even if it's not like right there in like the peach coral category. And I've reserved a little bit of space on my face in case y'all, that was a good little rhyme, in case y'all have uh, asked for something specifically that I have forgotten about. Gucci, I don't have a Gucci one that's this color at all, unfortunately, but it did remind me that I want to pull the Rare Beauty ones and these are the last ones that I'll do. So this is Joy. Oh, it's so beautiful! I need to keep this one out too. It's just scary the first time you use one of these and you're just not expecting that much pigment because they're really, 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 really pigmented. So that is just ugh, such a good color. It's such a true coral. And then we have Grateful, which I'm pretty sure is like candy apple red, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Just to, you know, give some contrast. This is so not my shade. Yeah, yeah, you see it kind of start to go towards that like pink red, that pink red that's just not my color. Ooh, no, 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 no. I don't like that at all. Not one bit. I don't have the say ones and I'm not going to get them because they're shimmery. I'm not interested. I have one more. I needed to like fill the space somehow. I just can't let that be empty like that. I just can't. This is the last one. This is the Kaleidos one. I, I will again put the color on the screen. I know it's a powder, but we're doing this anyway. Oh yeah, no, of course. It's powders where we ended up anyway, but like I talked about how there aren't a lot of companies that are coming out with, you know, versions of 004 Coral from Dior. I feel like they they did us one better. I just love, I love this formula. I love these colors. They've done a really, really good job. And I wish I knew the name of the colors. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it helped to round everything out. And that's the vibe today, y'all. I hope that this is helpful, helpful for me. Help me pull some stuff out that I'm gonna keep top shelf. And you can also see, even though, yes, this is my entire face that's this color right now, this general color family, like how flattering it is, right? It just makes everything else look kind of like tan and healthy and like, I don't know, it casts everything else in my complexion in a like more flattering honey color. And I just love it. I love it so much. So thank y'all for watching. If you did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel for more valuable and hard-hitting content like this, then subscribe while you're here. I would really appreciate it if y'all did. And I'll put a video up here. I'll put my, my face washing playlist up here for y'all to enjoy after watching this video. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!